then you have your 2021 year where yeah. we aren't the most talented team mm -hmm. and then you have so much more adversity yeah. just between not having fans nah. <laughs> you're being alone you're yeah. not being able to go out nah. trap like you're we're really just like yeah. at home practice back yeah how how much did that affect your mindset dad used to tell me all the time he used to tell me all the time son don't worry about the mules just load the wagon hey. Welcome back to Jayhawks Unplugged with Chris Tehan. We're at Johnny's North today. Thank you so much for letting them for letting us use their spot. Um, I'm here with my second guest, unanimous preseason All Big 12 first team uh, national champion, Jalen Wilson. How are we doing, Jay? Will doing great, man. Honored to be here, man. Hey, I appreciate that. It's an honor for me to have you on as a guest. We'll start this off pretty quick. Uh, we'll just get this into uh, your first your first experience at Kansas. You were committed to Michigan yeah. originally. Beeline left. Lasted a mere month in the NBA. Yeah. Good decision for him. But you come on your visit for Kansas. What was that like? I know you came when no one was here. Yeah. So talk about your first, like, just visit up here and how you knew that this was the spot for you. Yeah, I woke up at, like, what, 7 a.m. And, uh, like, my friend Kobe texted me, like, oh, Beeline's going to, to the Cavs. And I was like, oh, I didn't believe it, so I went back to sleep. And then, like, my mom comes in, like, screaming, <laughs> scrambling. I'm like, dang, I got to find a new school now. Uh, back in my head, I knew I wasn't going to go there then because I was only going for B-Line. And then I kind of knew that Kansas was always there. You know, they were in my top six. And then I ended up taking my visit. Uh, Oach and Sylvia were there. And kind of just fell in love with the place, man. Like, you know, the Phil House, the history there. Like, walking through that gym with that jersey on had me just feeling a different type of way. And then, you know, after I took the visit to UNC, which was crazy, like, my final two were those two schools. I just knew that Kansas was there. Like UNC just didn't give me the right vibe. Like the, this wasn't it. And then, you know, what came to school a couple of weeks later after choosing a whole new school. So it was just moving really fast, but yeah, I ended up being obviously the best decision I could have made for myself for real. Yeah. And I mean, they brought you here at a great time and yeah. jumping. I mean, sure, surely you're committed to Michigan, not even thinking about other schools for so long. So just no. even having to reopen your recruiting probably was just such a weird feeling. Man, I mean, it just, like, I was committed for two years. So I'm playing AAU ball with warming up with a Michigan shirt on. <laughs> like, it's, I'm like, all I know is Michigan. My, uh, my, when I signed in high school, I mean, I had a huge Michigan party. Um, my graduation party, all Michigan. So it's like, got to throw those picks in the fire now because it's like, I'm yeah. not even going to that school. And to be like here now, and, but to know like for two years, and then what? Two years of some change that I could have easily went a whole other route in life. It's, like, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, and I've never seen proof of any of those pictures of those parties. So you won't guys see good, them, man. Yeah, yeah, you guys did a good job They're of getting burning. rid of them. Uh, so let's fast forward here a little bit. Uh, you're welcome to Kansas Moment. I asked Mitch about it because everyone seems to have one. Yeah. Or maybe if you don't have one, you look back and you're like, okay, yeah. yeah. What was that? Did that happen early in the season? It happened in the summer. When, when was that for you? I think, like, it was crazy. I, like, never forget it. Like, I was a freshman. And like this is when I knew I was like, oh, I'm at Kansas. Like this is Kansas basketball. I uh, I like went through the lane, and uh, went to do a layup, and Dope just <laughs> Dope just comes out of nowhere, sends it to like the wall. Coach like stops practice, and oh, yo, you've never played doing a layup like that. I was like, God dang, like I got to score with the guys like this for to to be successful in college. And then he was just, yeah. it was a wake up, man. He it was hard playing against those guys. It's 18, like coming from high school. You get the ball in your hands, like Coach always says, and then you go to go to college, and it's a whole another ball game. So that playing against that guy every single day was a definitely wake up. Yeah, sure. it's it's funny because all three of the stories that have been told pretty much have involved Yudoka in some way. He I wakes told, you up. <laughs> I told I told mine. I saw a shadow cover my back. He dunked right on my head. Mitch said one. It was like, yeah. I'm pretty sure you keep asking players. They're all going to tell yeah, you if that. you played with Yudoka as a bookie and you came in as a freshman when he was an upper class. Good luck. Like, yeah, he's, he's doing something to you that. Good luck. Uh, yeah, welcome to Kansas. Yeah. Uh, another one that kind of pops to my mind from my eyes was that your first game, your first real game was in <laughs> Madison Square Garden, which, I mean, I'll, I'll, be, I'll defend you. That place is different. Like, getting yeah. up there, I'm sure, I mean, if I got in the game there, I wouldn't oh, be yeah. able to feel my body. I never I got know, the opportunity man. to. So talk about your first, like, first coach game. self checking you in and just being like, go that first time. Yeah. Well, it didn't last too long. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's what, like, eight minutes left in the first half. And I'm like, man, I'm not knowing when I'm going to get in. Uh, 
checks me in, and I think I get like a foul off rip. Like I think I foul Matthew Hurt, but I'm like good. Like I got a foul in. Like I got a good feel. And then like that next possession, uh, that's like a loose ball, and I'm running. And I'm just like I don't know what's going through my mind, but Devon passed me the ball. I'm just like. I'm going to shoot it, bro. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> it's transition. It's like 20-something left on the shot clock. Uh, not knowing the 18, like 20 seconds a long time left, but yeah. knowing now, I'm like, I mean, I'll never do that now unless it's like a, you know, a good shot for us. But, nah, I just pulled it, man. I, and it looks so cash, too, because I shot it over one of their four men, and – it didn't go in. Oh no, I forgot. I traveled too when I came in. So that's a <laughs> that's a travel and a foul. And then I go on transition, shoot a three, and miss it. Yeah. That's pretty much a formula to be benched the rest of the game. Yeah. And that's what happened. And you could probably take a three every uh, probably twice or three times a game now in the first yeah, ten seconds yeah, of the shot clock. Yeah. You do that as a freshman, it doesn't matter who you, you are. Nah. You're coming out. Coming gotta make so, it. Yeah. You I mean if you make, make it, it, you're probably you may still you're, make you it. You're gonna play a little bit. A little maybe. maybe like one more minute. Like, yeah, one <laughs> more minute until you yeah. do the next thing. Like but you miss a defensive rotation. As soon now. as you mess up, out of there, man. That freshman string is is not too long, especially with that team that we had. It was too many other players that could have shot that ball besides me. Yeah. So it is what it is now though. I learned. Yeah. Quick. And that's what K is all about, is just learning through yeah. those mistakes, and everyone figures it out. Everyone has those stories. Um, moving a little bit further on is, I think, maybe a week later, two weeks later. Bro, like against, three days, four days. Three days, days later, yeah. yeah. You can see Greensboro. Check in a game. I don't even think I'm going to play this game at this point, though, because I got checked yeah. out. I'm like, man, I might not even get in. This one's like this one's like six minutes left in the first half, and I'm like, man, I don't know. It's getting a little shaky. Then I check in. I'm all right. Let me let me shake that off. You know this team isn't that good. I can come come in this game, do a couple of things, and then shoot. I run back on on the offense, and I just hear a pop. I'm like, what was that? And then I I, I try to walk on my ankle, my left ankle, and then it's just not right. It's warm, and you know in your mind when something's wrong, like there's nothing can tell you what's going on. So I'm like, all right. I see the 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 people that fall down, the whole arena claps for you yeah. and all that. I was like, I don't want that right now. <laughs> I, I know I'm hurt, but I was like, I don't want I don't want everybody to to cheer for me right now. I just want to get the game. Like it ain't about me right now. So now I just run off the court mid game, and coach is like, "What are you doing?" You know, I'm like, "Dude, my ankle's broke." Like I probably said some other words. I was I was just pissed. Like I'm just mad. There's no way my ankle's broken. And then I go to the sideline. I'm like screaming at Chad, like, dude, mom, I'm done. Like, my ankles are done. He said, oh, no, don't worry. It's all, it's all. I'm like, all right, Chad, whatever. And then, sure enough, I go get the x ray and it's just a slash, like, yeah. right through my ankle. I'm like, well, here goes that year. And then mom calls me crying. I'm just, I'm kind of in shock still. Like, my uniform salon, like, yeah. I have everything on. And I was like, oh, mom, it'll be all right. It'll be all right, mom. And then, it just just kind of was like a little not downhill but just like damn it's such a bummer like you want to play in front of that crowd and yeah. then like we were so good I'm like, I just want to have like a little piece of that right now yeah. and I just I, I had to find my way and then ended up being on our red team like having fun you know playing with Devon, Doe, Mark, like Isaiah those guys yeah. and still learning my way was able to do a couple more things but that was definitely a hard, hard year. Like, especially with COVID hitting yeah. right after. Like, I'm like, man, like my first two years of college is just sucks. And yeah. what I think, and you know, obviously brightened up, of course, with COVID yeah. and stuff like that. But that first year was rough. For yeah, real. and I'm sure. Talk about how like watching that number one team in the country and the way we operated that year was something I hadn't seen really in Kansas history because mm. we had like. Don't get me wrong, coach got mad. There were certain things we had to critique, but yeah. our five guys, once we yeah. learned how to play defense, we knew how to go. What was that like for you? It just, just showed me what it took. Like, especially like looking back at our team last year, it was it was kind of just just like that as, as far as player led. And but sitting on the sidelines, like I'm literally just watching every single day. I mean, knowing that I'm not gonna gonna play this year, all I can do is learn at this point. And you just see what it takes to to be a, a top tier team in the nation, especially in the Big Twelve, with how we got beat by Baylor at home yeah. that year. Uh, I was pretty shocked by that because I, I had never, you know, experienced a loss in the mm -hmm. field house. Didn't know how dramatic that was going to be, and kind of just carried that that mentality of just trying to learn any which way I could. So started started learning, you know, different defensive things. I'm on defense for what? What are we on defense for? An hour and a half, two hours. Forever. Yeah, me and T were on red together for <laughs> a whole year. So. 
That's that, was, whole, that was the best red team of all time. Though. Easily, was, man. It's, it's me, some guys on there. Me, you, Silvio, Mitch, uh, Juan, Juan, Jank, EJ. EJ. I mean, that's that might go down in history. Dude, that, that, was, that was a top 25 team yeah, on the red no, team. We could have right won there. a couple games, maybe, <laughs> maybe in a different conference or two. <laughs> yeah, but maybe not in the Big 12 that year. Not after the Big 12. But, uh, yeah, I just learned what it took. Leadership. Uh and just being player led, I feel like that that's what all winning teams have is is being player led. Like coach rarely uh blew up on that team. Yeah. As far as, you know, when I came back after COVID, that team was kind of a learning experience team. Yeah. And you saw a different side of him. But uh that freshman year team was was hands down the best team in the nation for real. Yeah, best team in the nation. Those are we're two time national champions Easily. with that one right Easily. there. If we get a finish two that four season years out. ain't bad. Yeah. And then <laughs> So I had my freshman year, we went to the Final Four. We were good, like really good. We had a bunch of – we were player-led, like you just said. We had all these guys in pretty much our whole team left. We go through that second-year slump. So I saw the real colors of when you're struggling and going through that and not having that. And then obviously uh, 2021 or 2020. But then you have your 2021 year where we aren't the most talented team. Mm -hmm. And then you have so much more adversity just between not having fans. (laughs) You're being alone. You're not being able to go out and trap. Like we're really just like at home practice back. How, How much did that affect your mindset? And how much did that play into you? not wanting to leave but kind mm-hmm. of being like if this is like what it is next man, year yeah. i don't think i can do it, it that was, came into my that yeah, came into my mind it was too. tough man like for someone to have like their first two years of college go broken ankle then covid like it's just your mind is just that's the bad thing about covid i'd say the worst part of the whole year it wasn't even the fans wasn't the schedule wasn't the getting sick it was just the fact that you had so much time to just to think because it was just nothing to do couldn't go out you know, say you have a bad game, but we win. You know, overall we won, so hey, we're happy. Let's go out, celebrate, yeah. have fun, like get it, get it out of our mind. Can't do that. Uh-uh. Can't even do that. So it's like, you have a bad game, you lose. You're like, dude, you're just sitting there all night, just like thinking, like, oh, I should have done this, should have done this. Twitter saying this. Yeah, you gotta My, get all, yeah. you're on your phone, dude. So much, so drink, much you more. Gotta get off There's it. nowhere to go, and it's like, that was my first year playing. Yeah. So I was like, you know. I I started off really well, and then I had, like, a bad slump, and then I'm just like, man, people tell me transfer, people tell me this, this, and that. I'm just like, man, this sucks, especially with not having that, uh, like, the fan base be on your side, knowing how good, you know, our fans are, but, you know, they don't know me as well. You know, I'm new. COVID isn't helping at all because they're not getting to come to the games. Um, There's all types of issues in the world. And to have that, like, the first year, I'm like, man, I don't know. I don't know about this, especially after we lost 30 USC. I mean, I flew in, especially talking about adversity. Yeah. COVID, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Talking about COVID, I, uh, you know, start start off hot, slump for a month, and I come. I'm getting my feet back under me. we're, We're picking up. We beat Baylor. On senior night, bad, their first loss. And played great. Great. So I'm like, man, we we clicking at the right time. And go to the Bits Hall tournament, boom, Dave gets COVID. So I'm like, man, all right, we're going to get him back, play Oklahoma. I wake up the next morning. I go to sleep that night. I'm texting my mom like, I am just so sore right now. Yeah, like, why am I so sore? I'm so tired. I can't move. I'm like, man, I must just play it hella hard i don't know like yeah must be playing defense like something bumped uh and then i i wake up like 4 a.m head ringing body sweat i'm like man there's no way i got covid yeah. and i text chad i'm like i gotta get tested i don't want because i'm thinking let me take myself out the equation y'all can still play yeah that's, and that then, was not how it was working at as that point. soon yeah covid wasn't that light then that's a that's a full 10 days no matter no matter yeah. what and then i get tested they kick us out of the tournament. We go back. Y'all are practicing. I have to sit in that room for 10 days. So it's like. We, I mean, we all sat in that room yeah. for 10 days. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, but it's just like. I know my room, though. Y'all got to travel. Remember, I had to sit in my room, McCarthy. I watched I y'all. Would, I would have low-key rather been in McCarthy than no, been for there sure. in yeah, Indianapolis hotel? for the no, first yeah. couple days. That, way, I mean, that was hell. That being was in that fun. room, watching y'all play. Like, I'm watching my team play in March Madness. Like, yeah. I've dreamed of playing in March Madness. Didn't get to play in my freshman year. Now you're telling me. You know, I mean, worst case scenario, I don't get to play the second year because God forbid y'all was to lose that first because it was a close yeah. game. So yeah. I'm like, man, like, you tell me I'm not going to get to play at all in March Madness? And then 
I mean, we might, you may have rather not. No, nah, yeah, at that <laughs> point, yeah. And then I got uh, literally my tenth day was up, and I fly in the day of the game. I wake up at like five, yeah. take a little hour, fifteen flights to Indianapolis, and then I do shoot around at Butler. I'm like, God, dude, I don't know about this. Like, I'm feeling good in my mind, but my body is just. And then show to the gym. I check in again. That was like the quickest three fouls I've ever had in my life, yeah. like in my life. And after that, I knew it was kind of just wraps on that year. And then, you know, it's a lot of people saying after that year that we, we had to make changes. You know, CB yeah. said the whole year we weren't athletic enough. So like, he kept those tweets saved for a reason. Yeah. And uh, that's when I just went back home, like grinded like super hard because I wasn't going to was going to let myself come back and, and not show people what we really had because I knew we were going to be good and then, you know, come back with the same team yeah. almost and win the whole thing. Yeah, and that's what – like there's a perspective you, you kind of hit on a little bit. There's a perspective that we see inside of the locker room. Yeah. It's like you know how big that is where Dave doesn't practice for two weeks and we go play without him and then you don't practice for two <laughs> weeks and get in the day of the game at like 6 a.m. or whatever. It's not even fair. It's like – it's college basketball at yeah. this point. It's not a high school AAU game where you can do nah, that and nah. not see the court forever and just nah. like, hey, let me get into a rhythm real quick. No, you need to get into a rhythm. That's three fouls. That's your guy <laughs> having however many points. There's a couple of turnovers. Like, it is what it is. They're yeah. even the best players. And if there is players like that, they're mm -hmm. like Cade Cunningham's and exactly. Cats and D-Books and just guys what who are just people. disgusting. And, uh, yeah, that's hard. I still remember the night after the Oklahoma State – or the Oklahoma game, waking up the next morning and going into breakfast – and seeing uh, Ched, our trainer, and Doc talking. And when you ever, whenever it was COVID, yeah. you see Ched and Doc talking, you immediately start looking around the room, and you're trying to count Yeah, everybody. what happened? Well, I never knew what happened. Like, how did they tell y'all? We just walked in for breakfast. They didn't say anything. It's so, like, uh. we walk into breakfast, because I think we had wake up at, like, 8.30. So, yeah. like, there's no point in calling a meeting before. No one's going to be awake yeah, at 4 a.m. Exactly. whenever they got the text. Like, everyone's right. going to wake up anyways. So you see them two talking. And you see, I think someone else was on the phone that if you see them on the phone, it's yeah. like suspect. I'm looking around, I'm like, Jay Will's not here. <laughs> and then they're like, hey, everyone, before we eat, let's like all sit down and do this. I was like, Jay Will, hey, yeah. he's got it, dog. He's Pop got me it. in there, man. Yeah. Positive. Yeah, which, I mean, it's terrible. And just like thinking, I'll, I'll move it on to the next point because it kind of leads perfectly into it. It's like mm -hmm. we got what we did last year because of how much we went through. You talk oh, about yeah, you broke your ankle your oh, freshman year and it's like then you have the COVID year, you man. get COVID coming in, like all this terrible stuff's happened. Think about Ochai went through it, CB mm -hmm. went through it. Ochai, I mean, he goes to the draft trying to go. He doesn't get that stuff he wants. He yeah. comes back and everybody kind of after that – that USC game where everybody on Twitter, Twitter sitting there, mm -hmm. we need to make changes. We need to get more athletic. We need to get transfers. All this stuff. You, yeah. I mean, you just hit on it. We're all you're just all sitting there being like, why do we need yeah. anybody else? I'm just gonna put my head exactly. down and, and go. Exactly. I mean, I think Coach nailed it too. Like he he kind of like questioned our manhood in the sense of like, you know, this is my team, but are they capable of doing this? And like, I feel yeah. like everybody just went back like, man, we can do this. Like we we're too talented. Too big of a group. I mean, we had a huge lineup, talented guys that are all around. You know, we all around were versatile, but we all around did different things to help us win. Yeah. And it was like, I think we all just went home that year and just grinded. Uh, even with pursuing the NBA, like back in my head that year, I was like, nah, there's no, I can't leave Kansas like this. Like, yeah. I'm going to leave the school and no one's going to remember me. No one's going to even like think to mention me in any conversation. So mm -hmm. it was like, I had to leave this place at a, at a better note. So I feel like coming yeah. back, that's exactly what pretty much all of us, I mean, had yeah. in our minds, just making this place better. So, And that's the reason you come to Kansas yeah. is to leave and come to a place like Johnny's in 10 to 15 years or go <laughs> yeah. to wherever in the next 10 to 15 years and be like, that's Jalen Wilson. Exactly. You can cut all your hair off yeah. and look completely different. They're like, that's Jay Will. Like, he did this, this, and oh. this. They don't, remember, they don't remember your stats or anything. No. They remember what you did for exactly. the university. and. Uh, once you win that national championship, that's yeah, it stamped. Of, it's stamps it in stone. And I'm sure, what what's it like now? I mean, I'm gone, mm -hmm. so yeah. like, I've, I'm gone. I'm out of the, I'm out of the Kansas thing where I'm on the team anymore. But we won a national championship yeah. last year. What is the life after the Natty like? Oh, it's insane, man. Like everywhere you go, it's just you see how much us winning affected everybody. Like. The whole, I think the whole year, we we pretty much always said like, you know, we were in this not just for our team, but like for everybody, for everybody to experience this. And we saw when we when we had that mindset, we came back and won. Like, 
just the love we had after coming back from the Final Four, going to the field house, uh, seeing all the fans and media show up to support us. Uh, I'm like, dang, like we get this for the Final Four. I imagine we can get for winning. And then coming back yeah. and winning has been crazy, man. Like just everywhere you go, pictures and thank yous, and you have no much. You don't know how much this means to us. Like we really helping families and like they're just the way they walk around it's like we all won and that's yeah. how i like it you know i feel like everybody who supports us gets a piece of that like you don't you don't just walk around here oh i'm, I'm on the team i won this is our champion this is everybody like everybody's yeah. champions we all get to celebrate we all get to have fun and it's like every single week especially with football doing Fuck what yeah. they're doing like it's just been insane like the love and the support from from kids all the way up to adults has just been over the top like Nothing what I imagined coming back. Like, I didn't yeah. think it was going to be this much fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I am a little bit jealous. Uh, yeah. I got to miss out on boot camp and all that other stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, no, so, that's like, not the really best that thing. jealous. <laughs> but, you know, like, yeah, that is – it's 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 crazy just thinking about what we did and how Lawrence is – I mean, Coach Self hits on it all the time. It's like you go to the Final Four, you'll be remembered for a while. Mm. You go to the National Championship, you win the National Championship, you'll be remembered and loved forever. forever man. And it's like, okay, yeah, he's just kind of – talking nah. out his ass like everybody does real, like no it's it's for real and it's honestly like he probably didn't over exaggerate it enough because nah. it is like to the next level i mean any, everywhere Dude. you go i'm sure especially like being in lawrence yeah. you're just i mean you're a celebrity you're you're like a almost like a saint here no nah, and it's just you don't really realize it until after you win like what he meant like when he was talking to us first round before the first round game like Y'all have no idea how much fun this can really be if y'all win. Yeah. And in the back of our mind, or in my mind at least, I'm just like, you know, it'll be fun. It'll be packed. You know, winning would be great, obviously, you know, fans. But you have no idea, like, how many people are, like, wanting you to win, rooting for you. Yeah. How much support we had showing up to, to New Orleans. Um, you know, leaving that game to go play Villanova in our hotel was just packed to people. Packed. packed. And I'm like, wow, like. Is, is way bigger than us. And yeah. I knew that coming into there, but leaving to, to play that game, I was like, no, nah, this is way bigger than us. Like this this yeah. is this is we have to win this for everybody. And then after winning, just you see what he's saying. Like it just changes the way everybody moves around here, man. Like now we're just oh, we're champs. You're back to back. Like yeah, you're all types of things, man. Like and now. this is like I want it so bad too, because I just remember the fun we had. Um even the journey just going through the whole March Madness, like coming back after going to the uh after winning the first two games, come back, yeah. have fun, go back. We're going to the final four, come back. It's packed. Like, just that fun, you never, it's never matched until you do it again. No, never yeah. matched. Never, ever matched. Never will be. And it's, you get to that first round, and it's yeah. like, once you get to that first one, you're like, oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's attainable. Mm -hmm. And it is what it is. And uh, I kind of hit on it a little bit earlier, but we're, we were, we have that t shirt from whatever company that is that says the comeback hits. Yeah. And I mean, we like we were the comeback kids. We think about this mentioned like all the stuff that everyone went through yeah. before, and then you have that year. You have Remy who's coming in. They have all the talk about him, mm -hmm. talking about how great he's going to be. He can't find his his uh, his really his niche and like yeah. where he fits in the team because the way Arizona State played with him was so mm -hmm. different. You have what happened to you in the early of the season, yeah. and I'm sure that matured you fast. Yeah. It was really just like, do we come back from all those games uh -huh. because of? the way that we were always looking at ourselves in the mirror being like, okay, I have to change something. I have to do that. Like we were just so comfortable being behind and being in the mm. shit, knowing that, Hey, like we're going to lock in and we're going to go Man. do this thing. Like, is, is, is that what you think about it? Cause that's 100%. kind of like st taking a step away. I'm starting to think about it. No, I, I don't think if, you know, people ask me like about my year and would I change anything, I wouldn't change. Not one thing. Like if that's the adversity you have to go through the grind, you have to go through, uh, to get to a championship team and win it, I would do it all over again. Like, yeah. I feel like everybody had their moment in time where they had some point of adversity, um, some greater, some less, obviously. But, you know, speaking from my point of view, uh, being suspended like the first three games, you know, feeling like super disconnected from everybody, just embarrassed, and, you know, having to rely on just hard work to, to attain everything back, you know, coach. Coach and I spoke, and he was like, I'm, I'm going to make you work for everything you, you want to get back. And, and that's exactly what he did. Uh, and I think that was the smartest thing he could have done. You know, and when stuff like that happens, you got to got to man up and own stuff. And I thought like that was one thing we did as a team very well, was just we owned to everything. Uh, yeah. Lose to Kentucky by 30, you know, I could say 
my my point of view from that, we were all overlooking them because we knew how fun it would be if we would have beat them. Yeah. So we never really faced them up uh, head first. So that was something that we had to own up. Um, you know, just just different things through the whole year. And, and me personally, I just it took me a while. I mean, as people know, like it took me probably half the season to really get back to where I was. But you know, it just that just shows you the grind you have to go through and. You have to continue just to work and have the will and the will and and know that that opportunity will come again and and it came and I just I, I had to take it when I had a chance because you know when it when it when you want to have a championship year it's gonna take some stuff like that to happen uh, yeah. I think we said that at the beginning of the year before any of that happened sadly yeah it, it, exactly sadly, it takes it takes it, it takes something for the team to come around to 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 gather around and build someone up and it happened to be me and I, like I said I wouldn't change it all because. I feel like, you know, hands down, that was Coach Self's closest team, uh, the closest oh, yeah. team I've ever had or been a part of um, in my entire life. Mm -hmm. And I feel like just all the things that we went through, just closer, closer, closer. Yeah. And I feel like the, 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 the way we played on the court was a direct correlation from how we were together off the court. You know, it didn't matter if it was Ochai and whoever else. We were all close, like no matter who yeah. it was. Guys who play all the minutes, guys who play no minutes, guys who play some. It didn't matter. We all clicked. We're all brothers. And that just led to, to a championship team. I feel like we were closer than any other team that we played against. I mean, we 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 played teams on the court and they'd be arguing, cussing each other out. Never. 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 No matter what's going on, uh, whether it's us losing to somebody, we down at halftime to Miami. Uh, I'm, I was getting scorched in the first half against Miami. Cameron was just having his way, but no one's no one's cussing me out. Yeah. They just like move on, man. Like that was always our 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 mentality it was just next play, yeah. and that's, that it works, man. And real. Ochai did a great job of that. Yeah. Ochai is such a personable person. Yeah. I, I've said that it's like between him and Devonte, like that's a that's a that's a hard race to go man. win Mayor of Lawrence because yeah. those two dudes are so cool or whatever. It's like once. Once we got to the point where everyone started looking up to Ochai, then you started mm -hmm. taking the same responsibility that Ochai had yeah. off. And it started just to kind of becoming contagious yeah, where it was man. like, hey, yeah, you probably didn't have your best game. I, I mean, I don't remember that. It was like you weren't having your best game. If Juan wasn't doing it, there was never like, come on, dog, lock in, get, yeah, your, yeah. get your stuff together, blah, blah, blah. It was always like, hey, bro, we need you. Like, don't even think about it. None of us <laughs> care. Like, we only are playing what's going forward. Exactly. Yeah, that was big. I was so I, I did a little bit of research before I came in here. I was looking at your stats from last year because uh -huh. I was like, he did have a little bit of a slow start. Yeah, I think Texas Tech at Texas Tech when we lost was that like, was my game. That was your first mm -hmm. game, mm -hmm. and then so I started looking and you started to get more consistent. And mm -hmm. I looked at your rebounding numbers. Mm -hmm. That's when you started yeah. hitting the eights and the tens and the twelves. Yeah. Did you use that to start getting 100%. into a rhythm, just like getting the ball, getting the ball in your hands? 100%. And, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think. Those first like couple games coming back when I was suspended, I was only worried about scoring. Like, yeah. how can I come back and score? Because that was my whole mindset coming into school back that year. Was well, so I'm gonna be a scorer this year? And yeah. then stuff happens. I have to come back now. How can I help my team out now? Coming off the bench, you know, yeah. coming off the bench, you're not coming in to score most of the time. Mm -mm. So uh, especially with Coach Self. So it's like, oh, no. how can I come in and affect the game? Play, get some get some clock under my my feet, and then you know, the more you play, the more you have opportunities to score. And I didn't have that mindset coming in. First, yeah. I was thinking about myself. How can I score? How can I do this to help what I think is going to help us win? And that was the wrong mindset. And I think uh, that Nevada game, I had like eight rebounds, like probably the most I had all year. And I figured like the more rebounds I hit, the more, you know, opportunities I have to score, the ball's yeah. in my hands. I'm just getting a feel for it. Like, you know, if you're not, if you're out there and you're not, getting these steals, rebounds, assists, like you're not in tune with the you're, game. You're not, you're really not touching the your ball touch unless, is you're off. Spot, unless yeah. you're a spot up shooter. That's what I'm saying, your touch is off. So it took me a couple of games to understand that, to maturing, uh, to understand that. And then, yeah, that Texas Tech game, uh, like I said, opportunities always happen. You know, I'm not saying it was good, but but Remy had sprained his ankle that week before. Yep. And I, was, I knew I was gonna have to play. And I just, you know, attacked that game. I was like, I'm just gonna be aggressive this game and, and just, you know, Obviously, Texas Tech on the road is already hard enough. Yeah, I mean, that's like the hardest team to be yeah, aggressive against. So, I think we had like eight charges that game yeah, in general. Not, not having a full team is, is and playing on the road at Tech is already difficult. And, you know, the game, the ball just, just went in that game. Uh, the rim felt huge. And after that, kind of just like kickstarted my year a little bit. That's why I try to attack the Big 12, honestly. So I'll say probably that Oklahoma State game was the day 
Um, mm-hmm. Talk about rebounds. I had 15 that game. Yeah, I, 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 what'd you score? Like two. Yeah, I was about to say yeah, it was two like and two 15, and 15. But I was like, I'm going to do something to, to get yeah. on this game and stay on the floor. And I ended up playing most minutes I played all year. It was like 28 at that time. And I was like, all right, like this is this is what's going to be. I'm going to be the dog of the team, the rebounder, yeah. the the defender, boxing out, like all that little stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I mean, you won't be able to take me off the court if I'm doing all that. No. So I just kept running with that. And I feel like that was like my niche last year. And I, and I loved it. Like that role I had to, to let me get Ocho open, let me get CB open, let me go get this rebound, fan out yeah. for a three. Like that's why I, I found my place. I started to find something that. I didn't see too many guys on the team wanting to do, and yeah. that that's you had just, that skill to go. Do yeah, it. and I just ran with, and you know, I feel like that took our team to a, to another level. And when we have guys that are selfless, like you see Remy, you know, on the bench, never never complaining, never, never. like taking us away from a team. He's one of the most team oriented guys that I know, and no one on the outside would think that. But you know, if you know Remy, you know he loved us all. Like, yeah, love being around us and stuff like that. And that I feel like. Selflessness on the team is is what made us win. You know, even with Ochai being one of the best players, if not the best player in college basketball, he, you'll never know from the way he handles himself and yeah. presents himself. And when you act like that, it goes a long way. Like yeah. the basketball gods, mm-hmm. they, they, I mean, take care of you. They take care of you. Yeah. And you played a very cerebral way where it was like, I'm focusing on rebounding and I'm playing mm-hmm. defense and I'm going hard. Yeah. And that allows you to come, like, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of times where you come off four game and you see your shoulders to pass somebody. You're like, I'm just going to attack the rim. Like, your yeah. looks probably got so much yeah, easier because people real. aren't worried about you driving and scoring. Mm-hmm. They're worried about Ochai throwing up a 35 yeah, footer exactly. or whatever it is. And you come and run in and yeah, run in exactly. the lane and be like, all right, that's mine. Like, that, I thought it opened up a so much more. 100%. And just, I mean, I didn't do a bunch of advanced analytics and mm-hmm. did your percentages and stuff, but the way you were shooting like six of eight games mm-hmm. and then like maybe you would have a game where you were like six of 12 or yeah. whatever, but it's like, no, you're, you got so much more efficient. Your rebounds started going up yeah, and you end the year with, I think 11 or almost 12 and like nine. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I was close. Yeah. I, that's a, that's a yeah. stat line. They got you listed as a power forward now too. Though. I know. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I never knew that. Yeah. I was like, okay, I, I guess I'm a power forward. I saw, but I saw the small forward, like the top 25 small yeah. forwards. I'm like, I'm a power like, forward this year, but yeah, I don't know who, I don't know who makes that, but unless I'm not a top <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I was. That, I was hot. I was hot. There's no way. And then all the comments, literally like five of the ten comments <sighs> underneath, were like, "You guys got Jay Will at power forward, don't you?" Like yeah. someone was like, "Yeah, they do." And it was like, "Okay, now I'll let you guys slide." Like, I'll, 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 like yeah, I'll get you. I'll get twenty five small forward. Like, oh. It was like, "There is no way." It's a hard cool, list, man. Yeah, there are the cool people on there that I was like, "Yeah, you gotta be." You gotta that's be why I just keep quiet on the. They, they, I let them, whoever's behind that phone type up yeah. whatever they want to type. I don't even care. Yeah, and that's that comes with maturity, like you were saying mm-hmm. though. Your fresh, your sophomore year, your freshman year, the COVID year, mm-hmm. that you would like get have a bad game and go back yeah, into man. your room and sit there and read that you stuff. Scroll through it, and mm-hmm. you would think like you think those guys have some kind of knowledge of anything. <laughs> like they know me, they don't. No. They don't know you. They yeah. really don't know the game of the bat, the basketball for the most part. Yeah, they know us, stats. They just go on Google and look up who had twenty points. Oh, he played yeah. good. Like, yeah, come that's on, like go, hey, go look at Marcus Garrett's stats. You'd be like, oh, Marcus Garrett's terrible. Exactly. No, Marcus no, Garrett was have, the best player. You have court. no idea they the affect the court. Majority of the time. Yeah, it just be. That's why that took maturing as well after getting suspended. Like I just, I just deleted Twitter, stayed off of it, because why would I let someone who doesn't know me affect how I feel? Like you yeah. don't know me on or off the court, so why would I let you, you know, dictate how I'm gonna feel today? And that's yeah. just one thing I had to learn. Like stop reading and stuff like that, because uh, guys like Dwan will never get the credit they deserve. Mm-hmm. But I tell people like we would not have won with without Dwan on the court, and it's like. You look at stats up, I bet they're not the most flashy, but he set the tone the whole second half. We don't win that game without him. We like, don't win that game. I mean, I don't know if it's the first, like, four possessions of the second half, but go watch the first, like, like five minutes and watch what Juan He's does. touching someone, stealing something every single play. Every single play. Every single play. Doing something. Like, I mean, I don't even think there was one that he didn't even touch anything. Like, he Duh. literally just, like, kind of, like, jumped at the guy. And the guy, Frightened. like, just Pick terrified. his ball up. Like, he just had his hand, pre- like, that's why that just comes with maturing. Got to know who knows the game, who doesn't know the game. And I just started listening to Coach Self. I'm like, I know he knows basketball. He know, <laughs> so yeah, no. I, I know these guys, Randall guy with one follower on Twitter doesn't yeah. know basketball, but I'm pretty sure Coach Self does. And that's what I started paying attention to. <laughs> yeah, it's like I came in my first year thinking I knew something. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. I knew absolutely nothing. He, that, yeah, he's but, a genius when it comes to I, he, he He humbles you real fast. He humbles you so fast. And it's like – the thing is, is he has so much to back it up. And then he'll do like a math problem in front of you too to even make you look more dumb. He'll like, oh. he'll be like, I, 
example, like mm. I need more touches this game. It's like, okay, there's how many possessions here? We have this all star player. So what's this number of time? This number blows what is my it? mind. And yeah. you're just like, I you don't underestimate know. like. You hear a Hall of Fame coach like, oh yeah, he's in the Hall of Fame, but it's in the Hall of Fame of basketball. Like you really underestimate, like this dude's in a class of his own with the yeah. rest of the coaches in the whole nation, uh, especially now with two two championships. Like that guy's a genius. Like genius. that's all he knows about with timeouts and and what plays to run. Oh. I would never think of some of the stuff he thinks about. Yeah, watching watching the last two minutes of a close game with him that he's not that's coaching. Insane. I mean, the stuff that he says, like, and you'll just, you'll be like, what is he talking about? You think about it critically. You're like. God, that actually yeah, makes so like, much how sense. I, that sounded not, so no, dumb. Lose if you give me the coach. I wouldn't even know what to do. I would have been so gone. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's move on to this year. You go to the draft. Um, you, I mean, you obviously come off national championship, and it, yeah. everybody eats after a national championship. Mm -hmm. It changed my life for better. I, yeah. they, someone trusted me with a the podcast. They gave me a podcast yeah. as a national champion. <laughs> um, so that mean obviously, you, you go in there being like, okay, yeah, this is my year. Mm -hmm. What made you come back? Are you, are, I don't know how to word that. What what made yeah. you? What made you? What do you think? What made you come back? Um, I just knew that I had more to give to the school. I feel like if you look at my last two years, there's a time or, or period of where I go like a month where it's just bad basketball. Like it's just not the best. Stats kind of drop after that, and it's like I, I just started to want to want to come back to this place and have a full year, like a full complete year. I just felt like I had more to offer. Like I didn't want to leave with the incomplete year, and I feel like I owed myself that, I owed the school that, because uh, obviously even coming back the championship has changed my life forever. So it was like, like that was the least I could do. And uh, I remember we were playing Texas for the Big Twelve Championship on senior night last year, and like when we when I knew we won, I was looking around. I was like, man, is this my last game here? Like, no, dude, I, I just it so just hard, it, it was just like I got like emotional because like my my whole family's here. We just won, like we just won the conference. I'm like, man, there's no way this is my last game. But I'm back in my mind, like, I mean, we got a championship team. We won the championship. Who knows? But and in, in, in that point in time, I'm just like, dude, I don't know, like, if this can be my last game. But you know, I go through the whole summer, and I get to a point where I'm like, you know what, this is it. Like, I'm not gonna come back. I'm, I'm gonna go. Yeah. I'm gonna. I, I've, I've done my my part, my due. And you know, I I did good in the draft combine. Um, I'm doing good at workouts. I'm like, oh man, this is it. And then I just, I don't know, kind of just prayed about it, slept about it, talked with my family, and just I saw the opportunity I would have for me coming back. And, you know, the position that I'm in right now does not come across to a lot of players mm -hmm. uh, at all in, in many, many lifetimes. So I was like, why not come back and just be the guy like that that people know from the championship team that but now I can take it to a whole nother level. And I feel yeah. like that was just like a once in a lifetime opportunity to be here. And like you said, like it's like a celebrity status here now. After winning the championship, like that's like really the most humble way I can put it. Like it, yeah. it really is crazy. It was crazy. cool before, but, yeah, now, it's but like, now it's, it's insane. almost out of hand. So now I get to live it, you know, every single day and also better myself in the draft. I feel like I have a way, way better chance this year with uh, where I want to be at. Because um, obviously having uh, Ocean C be in the first round was, I mean, amazing. And it's like, I feel like I have the same potential this year to do do those things that they were able to do, and it's like, why why rush Kansas when it's you know it's amazing beautiful. place to be at? Like, so can't great. rush having fun, man. Yeah. So, I think that was my main thing: just not want to rush, you know, life and and knowing that you know everybody's race is just different. Yeah, and I I had this conversation with Ochai a couple of times just behind closed doors. Me and Och were cool. Um, but I'll say the same thing to you, dude. I mean, you already stamped your your spot in Kansas history. Exactly, you already yeah. stamped it. But now, I mean, dude, yeah, it's, like you it's, could, you go do what you need to do this year. Like, yeah. bro, you're talking about you're coming back here forever. You're gonna have one of those little things on the wall yeah. when you walk in. I like, walk by it every day. I'm like, man, I want one of those so bad. Bro, and, like, that's probably. I mean, <laughs> those are there forever. Like, I know I was taking visits here in my what sophomore year of high school. That's like 2017. Yeah, same dudes up there. Oh, same, same dudes. They're championship never, wall, and like, now that we're on the wall at, by the yeah. door, like we're on there forever, man. Forever, and so then you'll like, get your singular, like man. Jay that's that's what I'm saying. It's like it was so much in my head, like, and, and I'm not gonna lie, like, what do you have to be to get your number retired? Like, you have to one of you the have all to win. You have to either be a first team All American or win Big Twelve Player of the Year. Exactly, and and I was like, dude, I, I, I'm just confident in myself and, and what we can do. I was like, why not go for it? Like, why not yeah. try to get my number up there, my name up there forever? Like, I feel like I have the capability to do it and the team to do it. You know, coach believes in me. I believe in myself. So, 
Why not? Why not try at least? You know, yeah. go out with a full bang, like I said, a full year, and see what happens. You know. Yeah. Well, good luck this year. We'll wrap this up. Thank you so much, Jay Will, for coming yeah, on man. the show. Actually, wait. Let me, I got one more thing because me and Mitch mentioned in the last podcast. Uh, we're talking about the plane. Oh, <laughs> we said that you and Don were freaking out the I most. Saw that. Well, I mean, I know what's going through your head. Like, I want to tell the story for you, but you you nah, can go man. ahead and tell a little I bit of it. I had to because you're on if it. You like, know, yeah. If you know why, I'm not saying why it happened, but somebody, I won't say no names, was playing, being dumb, playing videos and, like, pictures of plane crashes before we take off. I know exactly who it is. So, you, you, you imagine <laughs> my head taking off. I, I'm already you're paranoid, already, man. Already on edge. I'm already on edge about planes, but at that point, I wasn't too... I just say, hey man, come on, that's not cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I, not I cool. That, that's how uh, I was before. And yeah, then after it was. He's like, I'm cool with planes, and you know, I didn't like, like turbulence that much, but you showing me that before I'm I'm taking off on a plane was not the best idea, and I mean literally, that's before we take off, and literally we take off five minutes later, we're at oh, you're at ten thousand feet, blah blah blah, we're yeah. gonna bring food, and it's like five seconds later, just boom out of nowhere i'm like yo what like, give me off the like, same dog i wake up i wake up divine mark's he's like sleep still mark i don't think mark actually he didn't know up. he didn't know and we're on the plan I'm like bro this engine just blew he's like what no it didn't and um i'm like yes it did because the plane i'm sitting there straight and all of a sudden now i'm sitting we're on tilted. that far right side i'm yeah. tilting now i'm on the side of the plane that blew i'm tilting i'm like nah plane shaking uh, I'm looking around, and the, what really scared me, well, two things really scared me. Um, I know Cosell's been on probably a 10 billion flights. Oh, so many flights. I mean, you probably can't even count how many uh -huh. private jets, planes he's been on. He looked nervous. He was standing. I'm like, nah, there's no That's way. The, 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 so yeah. I'm like thinking, okay, this is how I go out. Like, this is the way I, I leave, you know, God's time. This is, this is it, and I can't find my phone. I'm trying to make a video, you know, hopefully it lives through the fire and crash. Like, hey, this is Jalen, you know, love y'all. <laughs> and then I got the, the I won't say dumb, but the, freak, <laughs> the freaking steward, the the, la the ladies and dude, the flight attendants was like, um, yeah, she, was she kept walking around sliding their hands. I'm asking, hey, man, what are you doing? Like, what's going on? And then the most the random most random question ever comes as did we throw something out the window i'm like like what are you talking about that really turned me <laughs> up because now i'm like bro you keep playing with me and the flight attendant or pilot gets on like yeah we just lost our right engine and then some dude on twitter like saw that it was on fire yeah. and that just turned me up even more i'm panicking and we're over water yeah and then by the time all that happens mark wakes up and he's like freaking out but he's trying to remain calm you know mark tough so he, yeah he but trying he's, to, he's asking questions he's like yo bro yeah he's like, like yo, he's and jake like, rolls i remember jake rolls out the window to look he's like jake shut the window like i don't want to see this like we die i don't want to see us die like it was crazy man i was praying silvio was kissing his cross and waving like it was it was a maniac like that was the fastest 15 minutes of my life or slowest 15 minutes of my life because i i didn't know if we were gonna die or not. i mean, i promise you i thought it was over at that time uh, yeah, I did. I, mean, I already spoke on it, but I did too. Yeah, I literally mm -hmm. sat there with my thoughts. Mitch was talking to me. Uh, I like told him to shut up. I'm and now like, since that me, since that flight, I've literally uh, I pray before every single flight. I've never gone a flight after that without praying. I promise. Oh, yeah. No, no, that's, I, I do it every, and I'm almost like too nervous to pray. Like some like. I mean, now I'm getting a little bit better mm -hmm. after this last year. Mm -hmm. but that I get whole, comfortable. The whole next year, like, I was literally sitting there, like, I couldn't even pray because I'd be thinking, like, bro, just let us, like, no, please. No, I'm sometimes just wondering, like, please don't ever let me. Because that sound, that boom, I don't, I don't ever want to like, hear that boom again, dude. That, that That's terrifying. But yeah. that's already over. That's, that's way past me. I ain't ever yeah. think about it again, man. My bad to bring up that bad memory. No, All right, we'll wrap bad. this up, though. I hey, appreciate you coming on, dog. It's a great episode. Good luck this year. Uh, you know what? Screw all the first team Big Twelve stuff. Let's go win us a uh, Player of the Year. Let's get, it, let's, let's get let's get number ten up yeah, in the rafters. I like that. I like that. I'm gonna do it, man. Appreciate, Appreciate you having me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, that's that's episode two of Rock Chalk Unplugged with Chris Tehan. Thank you guys for checking in.